I, I'm not going to call it a bombshell. Um, uh, mm -hmm. What was expected, I guess, how quickly it happened. Um, I thought they'd try to give it time because they wanted it, to, you know, to give Bill his moment and let mm -hmm. it breathe. And knowing that Mayo was going to be the successor, there's really no rush to announce it. But mm -hmm. Everyone kind of had it yesterday once it was reported and learned that the Patriots had already put uh, language in place in their uh, contract with Mayo and filed it with the league to let them know that he was part of a succession plan and basically had already been pre-selected as the next head coach of the organization. Uh, and uh, that was submitted to the league and that allows them to circumvent Rooney rule practices and just mm -hmm. kind of jump right to the you know, have Mayo jump right to the head of the line. League had okayed it. Now, theoretically, Taylor, they could have, um, they could have still said no and gone in another direction, but that would have been an issue between Mayo and the Patriots. The league, as far as they were concerned, the Patriots could have gone in either direction. It's very clear. Kraft has been set on this for a long time, um, mm -hmm. and I don't. I, I'm, I'm guessing he didn't think that hard about it. Uh, even when Mike Vrabel's name came up, which was unexpected, maybe he took pause. But I think this has been the path. Um, it got here sooner than people expected. Uh, and now it's here. So I'm not going to call you a flip flopper per se, but I'm going to say you were team Mayo. You might have jumped out for a second or two, but, mm -hmm. yeah. you, but you like Mayo and you like this hire. And one thing, I was never, like, anti-Mayo. My only real hesitation, one, like, when the Vrabel news came out, again, I think it was valid for there to be some level of, hmm, that's intriguing. And then on top of it, when it was reported that Adam Peters and him might have, you know, been – it wasn't officially a package deal, but they were being connected in reports. So my brain kind of went to, okay, well, then you have – a guy with experience and a proven track record, and he may have a general manager coming with him. That's pretty exciting. But the entire time, my thinking was that if the Crafts think Mayo's ready, like the biggest thing is that he isn't experienced and there's going to be, you know, as we talked about yesterday, no one's going to be right because we don't know until he actually coaches some games and we see how the team responds, yada, yada, yada. Um, but, you know, I swung back to the Mayo side because that was my whole worry was maybe the Crafts don't think it's quite his time yet. Maybe he needs another couple of years of cooking. Uh, but if the language was in his contract, that they were like, yeah, no, as soon as Bill's done, you're our guy. I looked up the report from Ian Rappaport. This only happened three other times where it was put in language uh, so you could bypass the Rooney rule and have a coach be the successor. It happened with the Ravens GM Eric DaCosta. Uh, the Colts did it with Jim Caldwell, and the Seahawks did it with Jim Mora. So, I mean, not something that happens very often. Clearly shows a lot of faith in Mayo. The locker room absolutely loves him. Like, you know, there was some worry where, again, I keep emphasizing that I know people, some people want a clean break from Bill Belichick, but I think on the defensive side, that's not really what you want. You want continuity because that was the side that was keeping them in games and made them competitive. Now you have someone that was building the game plans, running the meetings, and someone that players have a massive amount of respect for. There's obviously a ton of other vacancies that they're going to have to fill and other moves that need to be made, but it was a pretty, you know, it's pretty obvious that they have a ton of faith in Mayo that they <laughs> didn't even let the Bill Belichick, you know, have more than a day. He had his day yesterday, but Okay, Kraft said he was going to move quickly, and now we've got the news, and I'm, I'm pretty fired up. I think this is really exciting. The NFL season is wrapping up, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Well, so, and again, I, I'm going to go back to what I always – I'm going to – I have my two thoughts – I believe Mayo has the uh, has the has the uh, players um, mm -hmm. uh, in his corner. I don't think that's. I think everyone who's ever played with him, I think anyone who's played under him, uh, recognizes kind of his what he brings, and they like mm -hmm. him. And I think they'll play for him. We talked about how daunting it is, but I have no problem hiring an assistant and having somebody say, "All right, go for it, do your thing." So it's not that that he's inexperienced. I don't mind inexperience. Um, it's like I said, is Everything he's learned from coaching, he's learned from Bill. That doesn't mean he's going to do it that way. It's very possible. Mm -hmm. What you learned is what you learned to not do. Like, mm -hmm. I see this, and there's plenty of people in that position. You, you learn under a boss or a supervisor. You take everything that's good from it, but you have your own ideas and your own thoughts. And I'm guessing Mayo's going to be one of that guy, one of those guys. So I'm not prepared to say – I had said 
flush everything. My fear is allegiances, whatever's left over here. I want a guy to come in with a new staff and a new perspective and new energy. I didn't want a lot of carryover because I just think everything was, po the, the well had been poisoned for several years, whether the infighting, people looking at each other and look, there's a bunch of guys we're going to leave anyway. And Mayo is going to, you know, bring in his guys. I didn't want that much carryover because I don't want it to feel like half, you know, half a makeover. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really did think once you're gone from Belichick, you got to go something new. Mayo may be that new thing. I'm curious what he does with the staff. My number one takeaway is, and we, you and I have talked about this, this is less important than the next move, which is who's going to be. Mm -hmm. And it, so I, 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 it's not lost in it. There's plenty of people in the comments who say this and a, a lot of people understand it, but who replace? it's so hard when you're replacing one person with two people. And who does the other part of Belichick's job is what all of us will con will will, you know, concede is the issue with Bill. That the players, the players, Bill. I mean, we've said it so many times for so many years. It's boring saying it again. But Bill, the GM, screwed Bill, the coach. We all believe mm -hmm. Bill can still game plan, strategize, prepare a team like no other. It was evidence that he had not lost the room. So Bill's curmudgeonly ways and no fun sort of atmosphere guys still played for him because the respect was always there i do believe that people always thought that to the last day what bill is doing is giving us the best chance to win even when he was super conservative with the offense and this and that it's what he believes we have and i think anything that bill didn't do with the offense or anything conservative that they were doing is really more a reflection of we know we're bad so we just got to not turn the ball over and see if our defense can keep us in this game, see if we can sneak out a win. He knew it. That's how he coached all year. They still showed up for him. But that next hire is a big, big, big deal. And I wonder, mm -hmm. do you think they have it set already, Taylor? I think there's a lot of options. So one, you know, reports have really come out, especially I believe it was Albert Breer reported yesterday, how, and we already knew this, but it was reiterated that Bill Belichick was overruling a lot of his scouts who were building relationships on the road and really liked certain players, A.J. Brown and um, Debo obviously come to mind because they apparently were really close. So on their visits, they were comfortable and joking around with each other. And Bill thought that that was a problem and that they weren't taking it seriously. Instead, Nikhil Harry had a great interview and obviously he... Belichick had a relationship with Herm Edwards and then was just like, I don't really care about all the work that you guys have put in on the road, spent time away from your families, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to take my guy and see how that worked out. So we really don't know how effective their current front office who's left could be without him. So we don't know if it means that Matt Groh gets a promotion. We don't know if they bring back Dave Ziegler, who obviously didn't work out with the Raiders, but it was also reported that he didn't work out because Josh McDaniels was overruling him, even though Ziegler brought McDaniels to Vegas, which is pretty wild. Uh, you also got Elliot Wolf. He could get a promotion within the building. But one person, if Robert Kraft wants to go to Gerard Mayo and say, I want you to bring in someone who you have a close relationship with that you can like, you know, grow with and you know maybe start a new regime with that could be trey brown so trey brown uh he spent a few years with the team i'll pull up his resume right now i tweeted it just so i'm not saying anything wrong um yes so he um has a relationship with mayo one that's pretty big so that was kind of like what i was talking about with vrabel and adam peters how they had a relationship the current version would be Mayo and Trey Brown. So Trey Brown was a scouting assistant and area scout for the Patriots from 2010 to 2012. Most recently, he was the senior personnel executive for the Bengals for a few years. And he also rose up the ranks in Philly's front office from 2013 to 2018, obviously when it, around the time they beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So he's a guy who has, you know, you talk about you want to get fresh eyes in the building. That's someone who, one, also has a history of drafting receivers putting a lot of stock into them and drafting them well, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, yada, yada, yada. And he also has success with the Eagles, who have also had success, I mean, across the board. And he's with the Bengals. I'm sorry, and he was with the Patriots. So championship ties, he's got his New England, you know, Mayo connections, but he also worked elsewhere. So I really do think that they're in a good position where, again, they can either uh, promote internally and keep that continuity of Kraft thinks that, there were good decisions that could have been made in the past that weren't because of Bill Belichick's influence, 
Or again, if they want to ask Mayo who he wants to grow with, and he says, I have a relationship with this guy, he's got outside experience, I'd like to see what he can bring to the table, they can go with Trey Brown. So it's not as daunting a task as I think it might seem when you first think about it, because there's so many things that need to be filled. And there's still question marks with the offense. You know, this isn't a done deal, but they already have their head coach. And a lot of teams are still interviewing people. Vrabel hasn't even taken an interview yet. So I think they're in a good spot and they have plenty of options that are, uh, you know, that fit the craft um, mold where they like to keep things in house or have some sense of continuity. Fair enough. Uh, But I guess ultimately, uh, how do you know that these guys can do it? It's relationships are one thing. This is the leap of faith that like is very scary, right? Because yeah, like, but the relationships I think are big because like just look at in New York where you know Brian Dable doesn't get along uh with his uh, that was more of uh, his defensive coordinator. But when you have tensions where the head coach doesn't really get along with the general manager, that's where things start to split. But the good organizations like the 49ers, like the Chiefs, the head coach and the general manor manager work in tandem. And obviously a lot of these are projections because these guys haven't been general managers yet. So there's going to be speculation, but we don't know. We truly don't. We're just going to have to, you know, see what their resumes are. You can either have confidence based on those, or you can, you know, have your questions. Those are both valid. Mm-hmm. And then we're just going to have to see how they end up executing. So, I mean, there's going to be some level of, I don't really know what could happen, especially when you talk about guys in the Patriots front office, because Belichick had an iron grip on everything that happened and was able to tell people, yeah. I don't really care what you think. Yeah. And look, I, I, I think that's going to be the thing. And like, so much of this is is how it's reported and it, it, you know we don't know but you're going to trust some people you know um and i'm sure it's not the entire picture but the general vibe around bill was um that i it's not lack of collaboration it was as you said like the final say is the final say um and that's how bosses operate give me options i'm going to make the pick but yep. as you said in the Nikhil harry situation you got to kind of either respect or defer, you know, at times to the people who have put in the work, right? You know, so like if you're running stride for stride with the people out there and you're doing close to the same amount of work or you're studying and scrutinizing all of this, um, then maybe, yeah, look, hey, I've looked at all of this stuff too. My take is slightly different. I think Harry's better than Debo, but it's not. It's based on small things and whims and conversations. The worst part is, well, I talked to another guy who I trust more than you, who coached him or knew him, and I'm taking his word over yours. And that's not a great way to develop a staff and people who want to go out there and do it. So you can't really do that stuff, you know, uh, Taylor. I think that that that's the kind of thing where, you know, you've seen the brain drain in terms of coaches uh, and other, you know, front office staff. Uh, and I, I think there is a general vibe that people who worked under here weren't allowed to kind of express themselves or grow or, you know, taken seriously. And it was all kind of not under the iron fist. And again, almost all of this is what it's exactly the same thing as we talked about, where the things that made him great attention to detail, control over everything, having his hands in all of it and this and that, which made him this coaching monster that was, you know, able to do everything that he did during the course of these 20 or so years uh, is uh, ends up being the downfall when things start going wrong, because you're just, you're used to being right. He was, mm-hmm. he was, he's always done this. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe he's slowed. Maybe his fastball is slowed. Maybe because the team has been so bad, his attention to de- his attention to what happens scheming and game planning to not embarrass themselves on the field has detracted so much from his ability to even look around and see like, you think he's watched a college game this year? Would he have been ready to draft? Like, no, it, it's a it, just being an NFL head coach is the probably one of the most time consuming jobs in America. I don't know how you do a dual role. You know, you really have to be, I would imagine Taylor 80 to 90%. You got to, this is the classic case of hire the people you trust and do what they tell you to do. You can't just be coming in and saying, nah, you can't do it. It's you, it's, you're coming from an uninformed <clears throat> place in that. And it's, I, I, I think that that's tough. 
Yeah, and NBC Sports Boston's Phil Perry asked Bill about this during the season. He was like, how much involvement do you have in personnel during the season? And, you know, Bill was saying the right things where he's like, I, I'm really not involved because I'm a head coach. That takes up most of my time. If they ask me questions, I get my feedback. But he really made it seem like he was not involved in the personnel department during the season, which makes it even more glaring when there's people who spend all of that time doing the work and the time after that when you start getting involved. And in your limited pers- – obviously, you know, Bill Belichick, limited perspective. It's kind of a loaded take to have. But, I mean, he doesn't spend as much time as the scouts do. So that made it even more jarring when Belichick himself is admitting that I – I'm not spending a ton of time on the personnel side outside of like meetings and getting updates and all that. But you're saying, no, I don't really value your opinion. It's like, so why are you hiring these people? What's the point? Why are they, why are they taking on one of the hardest jobs where you're, uh, I've said this so many times, but I cannot emphasize enough. You're away from your family. You're constantly traveling. It's a very difficult and strenuous job to be a road scout. And then they put in all this work for years where you're building up portfolios on all these players and getting to know them and building relationships. And then it's all for naught. So that's another thing with Mayo that I'm excited about is you finally have someone I feel like who will show respect. And, you know, he's talked about his um, I'll actually read something where I asked him a couple of weeks ago about his background in business and being outside of football and what kind of perspective that gives him. And he mentioned, he feels like he's ready. He said he could talk to men, women, old, young, white, black, it doesn't matter. And hopefully develop those people into upstanding citizens and help them evolve. I feel like my calling is to develop. So he understands the value in people and it's not all about him. And especially as a former player, I think he'll have a better appreciation for one, how to treat people. The fact that it's not like Belichick where you start icing people out and you have this really small circle of people you trust, but then you leave others out and start making them feel like they're not important. I think that's a lot of the things that started to fray the organization, especially it's fine when everything works because you're like, how am I going to say no to a guy who just won three Super Bowls in four years? But it's different when the best quarterback in history leaves and then the success just poof, it's gone. And you don't have as many explanations and the Bill Belichick luster kind of goes away a bit. So it's, it's another reason why this hiring is really exciting because I think the way Mayo treats people and handles and carries himself will be a significant difference. And I think attract people who are in the building and are doing well to want to stay and develop under him rather than maybe wanting to go elsewhere because they know that there's a limit on how high they can get.